Hey guys, this is Eric, and uh, I've done keying in motion over and over again, but I keep getting emails because people really don't have the best setup for green screens, and motion ain't real great unless you have a perfect setup. So I'm going to show you, go through and show you how I would key something with a uh, horrible green screen, not not prime conditions. You can see I have a lot of garbage over here. It's blurry. It's messed up down here in the left. It's was filmed on an eyesight camera. I think it's like an MPEG or an M H264. So we're gonna go about keying this. It's, I'm gonna do it fast, not as best as I could do it if I really took my time. But I'm gonna go over the gist of it to see if you guys can maybe get the hang of it. So I guess the first thing that we want to do is apply our primat to our movie. So I'm gonna go up to add filter, keying, primat RT. This will throw up my HUD. I'm going to say I want to look at my foreground. Then I'm going to select my backing color and take my eyedropper and select it. Now we can look at our mat. And you can see how horrible this is. Even when I work on it, you can see that the edges are just totally horrible and there's some holes in the mat, but that's okay. So let's look at our processed foreground. We see we have too much spill suppression, so I want to bring that back out a little bit. Okay, now we have this horrible, horrible key, but we got most of the background, which is mainly what I was concerned about. So now I need to make a holdout mask to fill in these holes in my cap and to be able to blur the edges. So I'm going to select my movie and hit Command-D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to remove everything from that copy of the movie, the Primat. And that will just leave me with a, another version on top of the one we just keyed. So now I'm going to use draw my holdout mat on top of this one. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pick my mask. I'll pick my Bezier mask. And I'm going to go in here and just kind of go around a little bit here. Like this. We'll just make a holdout mat around my head here. Okay, now as you can see, that has completely filled in my my holes that were in my mat. So now I'm going to select my mat again, and I'm going to make another one. This time, I'm just going to go around the bottom. Like so. And that gives me a holdout mat on my bottom. So now I have my holes filled in, and we're going to, I'm going to keyframe and track this later. So now what I want to do is I want to select my original movie that's on the bottom. Go to Filter, Blur, Channel Blur. And as you can see, when I threw that channel blur on there, it kind of blurred just the edges. As you can see. Now it looks like we're getting a pretty good key. So now I need to get rid of this garbage over here. So let's just uh, add a garbage mat. The mask to the whole group. As you can see, I have two movies in one group. So I'm going to select the group and just select a rectangle mask here. And I'm going to mask this out over here. And I'm going to invert it. And that takes care of the garbage on that side. So now what we need to do is we just need to keyframe our sh our masks along with our our person. And now we could easily go in, select our mask. Um, and now that our mask is selected, I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to show you how you can do this. Now that our mask is selected, I can go up to Add Behavior, go to Shape, and say Track Points. This will put up a, a tracking marker wherever your points were on your mask. And if you hit Analyze, it'll go through and it will try to track this mask. And sometimes it does well, sometimes it does not. Now don't worry about the top one there because uh, that's a separate mat altogether, and we'll, we'll do that in a second. So now it's stopped, and as you can see, it tracked. Let's see how well it's stuck. It looks like our shape. Let's go in here. It's looking like our shape has stuck to that pretty good. As you can see, it's tracked to that well enough to what we're looking for. For YouTube, it's good enough for YouTube. As you can see, it's stuck all the way to the end, actually to my uh, end mark here. It stayed within reason, enough within reason to where I can manage it. Instead of having to go frame by frame and keyframing it, I just used the, the track shapes, and it happened to work out this time. So now, 
let's select our other mask and let's see if it works the same way if not we'll go through and do it by hand so we'll add behavior shape track points they'll throw up your points and you can analyze it and see how this is going to work I'm not real sure how well it's going to do we can go back in and adjust manually uh, if this don't work out let's let it go through and track there for a minute looks like we're going to need to do a little bit of adjusting but not as much as I was thinking was going to have to do okay so now let's deselect everything and see how well our shape tracked let's go back to the beginning it looks like if I scroll through our shape is sticking pretty well except for down there by the ear so all we have to do is find out where our shape goes off goes awry which about right there I'm going to say right click edit points and this will show me my points I'm going to turn on my record key and I'm going to scroll up a little bit like that and you can see we're off here so I can bring this point in like that scroll on up with it looks like it's coming off again a little bit right here you can see how this track points saves me so much time. I would have to go frame by frame, you know, to do this. Like I'm doing now, adjusting each point, but where I tracked my shapes and attracted my mask with the track shape behavior, the, the adjusting for the mask is minimal, very minimal. So as you can see, without hardly having to adjust a single keyframe, my shape is stuck right there and, and right with it, all thanks to the track shape behavior. Let's turn our record key off see what we got as you can see now we have a key let's throw in a background um, let's throw in this here be fine now we need to put it on the bottom don't we so let's drag this underneath and now when I play it, hey guy, let me turn off my audio here. When I play it, let's let it cast through a little bit. You can let it cast through once or twice, and then it'll play it back in real time. Or just pause it, hit Command R, it'll go through and render. And now, thanks to our track shapes, our holdout masks. Our channel blurs, mainly tracking our masks with the track shape behavior, with the track points behavior under the shapes. So uh, there you go. You can see it was a horrible conditions for green screen, and uh, it actually worked out with a pretty daggone good key. So uh, let me open up my groups here, so you can see everything that's going on. As you can see, I have my channel blur, my primat RT on the bottom, and I have the masks, my holdout masks on the top clip and I have a uh, garbage mask on the group as a whole to get rid of the garbage on the right side and when we put all the behaviors especially especially these track shapes behavior I want you to understand that this track shape behavior saved me a lot of time I would have to have went frame by frame and adjusted that shape to move along with me um, I might have been able to go every fifth frame or every tenth frame but still I'd have to go frame by frame and adjust that holdout mat but with the track shape behavior it saved me 90 percent of time it would take to adjust those shapes as you can see when I was making the video I just barely had to adjust a little bit down the by the ear here all because of the track shape behavior so I hope you've learned something guys I hope you can pull off a pretty good key in motion as you can see it's very possible to do a very good key the edges are wonderful not wonderful but they're blurred out pretty nicely and they're smooth and they're not rough and jaggy and if I can pull a decent key with the green screen you just seen I had with no lights, the only lights in the room was was, was natural lighting. So uh, if you can pull off a key in motion like this, like I did with the footage I did, I don't want to hear nobody complain how motion can't 
do keying as long as you know what you're doing and know how to use your track shape behavior and your holdout mask you can pull a pretty daggone key good key in motion you just got to learn the controls fellas so i hope you learned something and we'll see you next time